What up? Jamo here. Most of the woodworking videos on YouTube are live edge resin river tables. This isn't one of those videos. In this video, I'm making a wooden PC case with a little help from this Rosewill SCM01 that I picked up from Amazon for $22.99. I'll start by disassembling the case, first removing its sides, then I'll remove the front cover and see what components we can use for our custom build. I'll save the status LEDs and power button. If you want to front mount USB 3, you can use that as well, but I'm going to keep the front of the case bare for aesthetic purposes. To further break down the case, I drilled the rivets that held everything together but the rear of the case and the motherboard tray. It's a little tricky separating the pieces without bending them, but a little bit of stick to goes a long way. There were a lot more rivets than I expected, but all in a day's work. We now have the basis for our new case, but it's a little on the long side. I've marked where I want to trim and add a margin for a nice bend. Unfortunately, what I ended up with is more like an auto body repair with a rock, but it'll all be hidden so it isn't the end of the world. Once the aluminum is cut down to size, I set it on this nice piece of 3 quarter inch poplar and trace its profile. This piece will make up the base of our project, and I've marked the final dimensions down, as well as an area I'll remove so the aluminum tray can interface with the wood. I've taken a few pieces of 3 h thick poplar stock and laminated them together to create the material for the sides. I looked for pieces that had some really interesting figures so they would contrast nicely with the resin I have planned, but you can choose whatever suits your taste. You can use a router to make this inset for the tray, but I used a chisel and a lot of patience. The important thing is that you measure twice and cut once, or make a whole bunch of small cuts over the course of an hour. I also made a notch in the rear of the base for my Neanderthal fold to fit into, and after a few decorative screws, it's much easier to visualize where we're going with this. Also, I've added a spacer to hold the weight of the power supply. Kind of pretty already, isn't it? I've cut the laminated stock down to size for the front and sides, and using some tight bond too, I'll make them all one big happy family. I've added this piece to the back for additional strength, and it'll act as an anchor point for the top. Now on to my favorite benchtop tool for some shaping, so we can get down to the final dimensions. You can always take more off, but you can't add material back on, so when building, always leave tolerance on the outside of your cuts. We finally have a box, which is really 90% of woodworking. You will make mistakes, just be patient and stick with it. Don't let your projects beat you up. Add stain or paint to taste and a few coats of clear, in this case polyurethane, and make a plywood mold so you can pour some resin. Now to mix up some resin of your choice and add pigment. I'm using pour on resin, not the least expensive, but it's what I have, and Jacquard Pearl X Emerald Powdered Pigment. I mixed the pigment into the resin completely, and then added an equal portion of the hardener after. 
The instructions say to double mix this. Mix it thoroughly in one cup, pour it into another, and mix it again for another few minutes. And now pour! I've shaped a few pieces of curly maple and double side taped them into the mold as the basis for our top. I used to make fun of Peter Brown for never having enough resin made up, but it looks like we'll need to mix up some more resin. And pour again. You can use the stir stick to mix in a pattern, but with this much pigment you'll need to do it a few times to get the design to stay. Well, more resin it is. Make sure you pour everywhere to fill in the gaps. It doesn't really matter if a little bit escapes its boundaries because we're going to sand it all after it cures. After three days, I've removed the top from the mold, and it's time to cut it down to size. A little stain and poly really makes this thing pop. To affix the top, I'm using hinges. I've traced where I need to mortise for the hinges, and using a chisel, I'll slowly remove material until the hinges can sit flat. This is a lot easier to do before you coat the piece in polyurethane, so you should probably switch up the order of operations here. It's also easier to hide your crimes when the finish hasn't already been applied, so keep that in mind. Eh, do as I say, not as I do sort of thing. A few screws hold everything together, so drill pilot holes and thread the screws in using a screwdriver. If you use a drill to send the screws home, it's really easy to tear through this thin material, so proceed with caution. I've populated the aluminum tray with my $400 budget PC build from 2016. It's comprised of an MSI A88XI ACV2, an AMD A10 7860K, 
a Corsair CX430 power supply, 16 gigs of G-Skill Ripjaws X DDR3, a Samsung 850 EVO SSD, and for good measure I've added an EVGA GTX 750. The entire assembly just slides into place, and it's held there by those four decorative screws that we threaded in earlier. A modular power supply would make cable management in here way nicer, but I'm using what I had on hand as opposed to creating the perfect PC. This would be an awesome home theater PC, not only because it would look great in your living room, but the wooden structure is actually dampening the sound of the fans. This thing is almost silent, and man did it turn out beautiful. I've mounted the power LED and the on-off switch from the rose wheel case in the rear by drilling appropriately sized holes and hot gluing it in place. The airflow is great, the PC stays nice and cold, it's quiet, and it looks great on a desk or an entertainment center. I'd call that a success and I hope it inspires you to make something. If you've made it this far, thanks for taking the time. Leave a like, a comment, consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next one.